as far back as I can remember, I've always had some of an attraction uh, toward members of my own sex. During my early childhood, I was placed in a children's home, and throughout World War II, I attended many parades, and there were soldiers, sailors, marines, things that sparked my interest. Uh, later in life, I uh, was, got out of the home, returned with my mother, and I was finally in the high school ROTC. The uniforms wanted to come to me, so. <laughs> uh, so at age 17, I went down to the recruiting station and uh, applied. But physically, I got rejected. I only weighed 98 pounds. So what I did, I went back home, put on my ROTC uniform, promptly went back, they directed me to see this major, and when he saw that I looked so good in uniform, they let me in. <laughs> I uh, initially was at Fort Valley, Kansas, and I, I might go back a little further. On my way to Fort Valley, Kansas, from the recruiting station, they uh, took us on a train. The trains at that time didn't have these cars that had sneaking cars, but uh, the seats were made into beds. It was an upper bunk and a bottom. And the very first thing that happened was I got assigned to this fantastic looking young Italian boy that caught my attention right away. So I got assigned to sleep with him on this one part. Of course they were saying, now you can't sleep head to head. You gotta sleep head to foot. Well, you know what position that is. So, <laughs> So, anyway, I was quite nervous all evening, but when we finally arrived at uh, uh, Fort Valley, Kansas, uh, I knew then instinctively I had to be very careful. Because at that time, there was no don't ask, don't tell. It was just don't be, period. You know, you can't be. So, you have to exercise great control over your emotions. I was later, uh, at that time, the gentleman that was next to me, we became partners almost instantly. And as I transferred from Fort Valley, Kansas, to other bases, uh, one was the Presidio Monterey, uh, David and I were still inseparable. Uh, fortunate for me, um, it was more one person than the multitude that I would have otherwise gotten involved with. So that sort of helps protect you away from, at that time, from a, bit, a, a bad result. Finally, I was uh, transferred to a base in. Uh, uh, near Seattle, Washington, and from there to Korea as a combat medic. I had some hospital training, medical training, prior to going to Korea. Uh, when I was in Korea, it was, uh, I must say, uh, uh, quite an experience of living in hell. Uh, you didn't think much of sex. You were freezing your ass off. You know, it was cold. It was uh, the worst cold I have ever experienced in my life. Bullets were being shot around you. So, sex was a sort of a thing that didn't really enter your mind too much. So they, uh, they say that uh, on the battlefield, uh, you just have good buddies, you know, and those, so that's as close as you got to people. When I got out of the, uh, from there I went into uh, the natural progression. I told you these parades had sailors, marines. What's that natural procession 
progression for me was to become a sailor. When I got out of the army, they tried to draft me, and I told them, I said, well, I just came back from Korea. How can you draft me? They said, you never uh, fill out the draft card. I said, so I was 17 years old. Don't matter. Don't matter. You're going in. So, fourth way, I went down to the Navy recruiting station, and I joined 